Okay, so here we are in KineMaster. This is what you see when you first open up the app. Now, before we jump into creating our editing project, it's a good idea to get your app set up. So go to the settings button down the bottom left-hand corner. And in here, you can manage things like your account settings. You've got your editing settings as well. So the default settings for the majority of your projects, like the photo duration, layer duration. You've also got your default settings for photo cropping. Now this is one that I would actually recommend you change. And this is a question that we get asked a lot when people import their photos. It applies this Ken Burns effect or this slow pan or some motion across it. If you don't want that and you just wanna bring your photos in, then change this bottom setting here to either fill screen or to fit in screen. So I'm gonna leave it on fit in screen. You've also got audio recording settings and also some sorting settings on how your projects are sorted or listed when you've got a heap of them on the go. But it's a good thing to note back up here under information, under about my account. This is one place where you can purchase a subscription to KineMaster or if you've already got a purchase and you've just installed the app, this is where you'll restore that purchase on your device. So by having a subscription, this is where you can remove all of the watermarks. You can access the premium assets things like stock footage, title templates, and other effects, and also some other advanced features. But for this walkthrough, we're not gonna show you with a subscription, this is the free version. So we'll back out of this now. So once you've got those settings sorted, the first step is to create your project. So we hit the big button in the middle there. It's gonna ask you what type of video do you wanna create, a 16 by nine or widescreen, a nine by 16, which is portrait, or a one by one, like a square video. Now, one thing to note here is that once you pick this and you start editing, that you can't come back and swap later. You have to start a new project for a new aspect ratio or a new size at a later date. Currently, there's no way to switch between them once you've started editing. So for this tutorial, I'm gonna take you through with a 16 by nine or widescreen video. So this is the KineMaster editing interface. The circle in the top right hand corner is where we can import all of our media or assets, our audio, record voiceover, add additional video layers and bring other things into our timeline. And also hitting that red button in the middle, that'll open up the camera. So we can actually take photos and record videos directly in the app. You can see my awesome messy cable setup behind where I'm recording here. There's also a little icon up there to access the marketplace or the asset store. And this is where you can purchase things like effects, overlays, transitions, music, and additional fonts. Back out of this now. The big section down the bottom is your timeline. This is your editing workspace area. This is where the editing is gonna happen. Down the left-hand side, you've got a few icons there. The first one is the back button. You've got undo, you've got redo, help, settings. You've got a button there to expand out your video layers. So if you've got a heap of video layers or a complicated timeline here, and you wanna fill the screen with that or make that bigger, that's what that button does. And the last button down the bottom left will let you jump between the start of your video and the end of your video. And the big black box at the top of the screen there is your playback monitor or the window that's gonna play back your video while you're editing it. Now, if you do have the free version of the app, you'll see that little trash can icon up there. If you press on that, that'll let you again sign up so that you can remove that watermark. All right, so we're gonna jump straight in and import some footage and take you through the process for editing in KineMaster. So we'll tap on media up the top right here. Go through and find your video files that you wanna drop in. Once you tap on them, they appear down on your timeline. So go through and add all your primary clips, the actual core content that you wanna edit down in your videos, add those to your timeline now. When you're done, hit the tick in the top right hand corner to go back to the editing mode. So now that we've got our clip down on the timeline, if we just tap and swipe left and right, then we can move around our footage here. We can pinch to zoom, to zoom in and out on that footage. And if you've got multiple clips in your timeline, you can just tap and hold on them and you can pick them up and move them around to swap their order or just to change their positioning in your overall story. Now, usually when you're editing down videos, I would always recommend that you save all of your color effects and, and color grading until the end. But in KineMaster, I'd actually suggest that you do all of your color grading or getting the colors close to where you want them up front. And the reason for that is currently the way the app works is that there's no way to copy and paste your color effects or your color grades or your settings across to multiple clips. So it's much easier to make all of your color adjustments to one big clip here or a couple of big clips in your timeline instead of to potentially heaps or hundreds of them in your timeline once you've finished editing. So to do that, tap on your clip and you've got a whole extra set of options that open up here in the top right hand corner. Now when it comes to color grading, you've really got two main areas. You can apply a color filter, and this is essentially like an Instagram filter, a preset that you can apply to your clip. So I'll show you that if we tap on color filter there, under basic color effects, 
we've got a heap of little presets in here. Now, while there's a lot in here, I don't personally think any of them are anything really awesome. If it matches the type of video you're creating, then by all means use them. But in most cases, you probably want to select a none for color filter and go back out and make your adjustments just using the color adjustment down the bottom here. We tap on that in here, you've got control over the brightness, the contrast, and the saturation. So we might up the contrast, up the brightness a little bit to brighten it back up, and maybe add a little bit of saturation in here as well to bring those colors out. So you can see we're not making massive adjustments here, we're just tweaking this slightly to make it look a little bit better. So once you're done with that, just hit the tick in the top right hand corner to go back to editing. And again, that's normally something that's done last, but to save making those same adjustments on every clip, we'll do it here in this process for KineMaster. All right, so the next step then is to start cutting down your footage. So select the first clip in your timeline and you'll see you get a yellow box around the outside. Now on either side, the left and right side of that box, you can see that you've got a wider section of yellow. Those are called handles. So if we grab on that left one, tap and hold and drag to the right, we are changing the start position or where this clip is gonna start. Now this is just sample footage, so it's gonna be in the middle of a sentence somewhere in this case, but you would make this where you want this clip to start. To lock that in, you just let go, and the clip now starts at that point. And likewise, at the end of our clip, we'll scrub across here until we find where we want our clip to end. Or if I say, I'll see you soon, somewhere right there. Now we can either grab that handle again and close up that gap to that point and have our video finish there, or there's another way we can do it. With editing, there's always multiple ways you can do things. With the clip selected, we can come up the top here to trim split. Now you've got some basic tools in here, but you've also got some pretty advanced ones. Most editing software will just have the option here for split at playhead. So you could split the clip at that point and delete that extra clip. See, we've now got two clips in the timeline. We could select the second one, press delete the trash can over the left, and that's gone. I'll undo that now and undo that cut. Select our clip, come back up here. Or we've also got these two more advanced options, which again are only found in really advanced video editing software, which is trim to the left of playhead and trim to the right of playhead. Now these will let you cut down a huge amount of footage really, really fast because it essentially does what you just saw, splits the clip, selects it, deletes it, and closes up that gap all with one button press. So in this case, if we wanna remove that end of the clip, then we just choose trim to right of playhead. And it's done exactly that. It's removed that last part based on where our playhead is or based on where that orange line is. So I think that's an awesome feature to have in here and really, really powerful. So I've trimmed the start off, we've trimmed the end off. Now, if there's any mistakes or anything that we wanna cut out from the middle, again, find where those are. We can then split at the playhead and we can either make adjustments dragging those handles across. Might split another one here, remove another chunk here, add another cut. We could tap on that clip in the middle there, press delete and that's gone. So there's a few different ways to do it. The idea here is to go through and remove everything that you definitely don't want in your edit at this point. We don't need to fine tune everything yet. It's all about removing everything that you definitely don't want in your finished video. And if you need to, you can, as I said, move the clips around, tap on them, hold, and reposition them to help build out that story. Now, if you wanna add in any B-roll footage, then you come over here to the layers button. And in here we can add handwriting, overlay text, effects or media, we're gonna go media, we're gonna add in some extra footage, go through and find that extra footage. And when we select it, it drops it down onto our timeline on a different video layer. So as we scroll through now, you can see there's our normal footage. And at this point here, we've got this other clip that shows up. This is just sample footage I've got here. That's my son, Alex. He's looking very happy in this shot. But what you can do then, if we tap on that, you can see that it's selected up in the top right hand corner. So we can tap on it, we can move it around, place it down the bottom here. We can scale it up. So it's gonna fit inside our video. And just the same as every other clip, we can tap on it and we get these same features. So we could trim to the right to cut it down really, really short. We can again press and hold and move it around. So any extra footage or B-roll footage that you wanna add in here to help tell your story, then that's how easy it is to add it in. And the process is very similar to add in things like titles as well. So if we go back to layers, add text. Uh, say Justin Brown. I'm gonna bring my name up on screen. You can see it's appeared there in the bottom of our timeline. We can resize it on the screen here. And let's move it down the bottom left. And maybe we'll move it right to the start of the video. Maybe just in a little bit. And we'll probably shorten that down. Just grabbing that handle again. So all those same editing tools apply to every clip or every element that you bring in. So if we zoom in on this now, we can see the video starts. And at that point there, Justin Brown appears. At that point, it's gone. 
Now, if we select our title, then you can see we've got a heap of extra control over that title and animations and things that we can add to customize that up in the top right hand corner. We can adjust the font, we can change the color, we can add an animation to animate it in or out. So if we click on in animation, let's choose fade in and it's set to one second, that's fine. Hit the tick. Now, when we play through this, you can see that it faded in. Now I'll select it again, let's do the same out animation, let's do a fade over one second, go okay. That's now going to fade in and then fade back out. So while you're going through and adding things like your B-roll and your titles, you can constantly be adjusting and refining these edits as well to start to tighten this up. And every pass where you're going through and playing through this, you're really starting to refine and dial in that edit. Next up, you want to import any audio files or any music or sound effects, and you can do that by hitting audio in the top right hand corner. Now, KineMaster does give you access to music, or if you've got any on your device, then you can import that as well. We'll just choose music assets, and we've got a track here, Warm Hearted. We'll hit plus to drop that down to the timeline, and you can see that's down the bottom here in green. Now, as you can see, now that we've got a few video layers in here, uh, this is getting cut off down the bottom. This is where we might want to expand out our timeline by pressing on the button on the left here, and that'll make our timeline much bigger and our preview window, our video layer, a lot smaller. So once again, tap on that audio track, we can pick it up and we can move it across to the start of the edit. So the music starts at the start of the video. We can add cuts, we can add any adjustments to that. We might wanna select it, shorten it down. Again, I'm just zooming in and out on the timeline as we go here. So that it finishes around where our video will finish. We'll just compress our timeline back down now so we can see our options. So if we select on that music track, now you've got a heap of features in here, things like volume. So if we want to lower the volume on this track, we'll come over here to volume and we can lower the volume on that. We'll back out of this now. Again, we're not going to run through every feature in here because this would be a massive tutorial, but these are all the important things to get you editing fast. And we've also got advanced features in here and filters and things, audio filters that you can add in and you've got advanced control over your volumes. You can add in keyframes and really get a bit more advanced with your volume control in here as well. So it's cool that it's got these features. We'll back out of this now. But if you do wanna add a fade in and out to this music track and to your entire video, again, that was back under settings. So hit the settings wheel and you can say here, audio fade in over two seconds and audio fade out four seconds. It's pretty good to leave those as the default. And likewise with the video itself, if you wanna fade the video in from black at the start, and fade it out back to black at the end, then you can turn those on here. So you can see now at the start of the video, it's fading in, and at the end, it'll fade back out. So that's where you can turn those on or off if you want those on for your video. So once you've got your audio tracks in or your sound effects in, now you can start looking at adding some effects or transitions to your clips in your timeline. So I'll just zoom in here. So for example, we've got this clip here. As it finishes, it's just a hard cut to the next piece here. Now, there's nothing wrong with a hard cut or a jump cut like that, but what you could do is zoom in on this second shot just to break it up a little bit and make it look a little less harsh. So if we select that clip, we can come up here to cropping. Now you will wanna make sure that your start position equals the end position. So you need to press equals here. And now all we need to do is just pinch to zoom in and rescale and, and reposition our clip here. So it's just a little bit bigger. Hit okay. You can see now when we play through and finish this one clip, the shot is a little bit different. It's zoomed in, which makes it a little bit easier on the eyes of your viewers watching. So it's really simple in KineMaster to do things like zooming in on your clips in here. But also if you wanna add things like transitions between the two, obviously zooming in is one way, but if you wanna actually add a transition or a fade or an effect between them, you click this little plus button between your two clips. And this will open up transitions. Now in here, there is a heap of transitions. And as with most transitions, most of them are terrible and will make your videos look really, really bad. But if you stick to the basic ones, like under classic transitions and you just go across fade, then it will actually fade between the two different clips. Now it's actually not going to show me what this transition looks like until I save this one out. But you can see that there's a transition effect on here because of that different icon on the screen. So once you've gone through, added in any transitions or zoomed in on any clips, your edit should be getting pretty close at this point. So go back through, play it through, make any final adjustments to it. 
or tweaks. And then next up, you'll wanna export or save your video file out. So to do that, we're gonna hit the button in the top right hand corner, and here we get to choose the export settings for our video. Now the default settings here are usually going to be fine. It's gonna look at the clips that you used in your video, and it's going to match those. So in our case, our footage was 4K footage, shot at 30 frames per second, so it's suggesting that for us. But obviously you can make adjustments here if you don't want to export 4K, you can change it to 1080p, and obviously you've got control over your frame rates here as well. But I'd say for most people, it's highly likely you'll just be leaving this as default. And for the best quality settings, I'd also suggest leaving this slider here up at high quality. If the file size is too big, then you can make the file size smaller by lowering the quality or lowering the bit rate. You can see as I slide this down, the bit rate or megabits per second is dropping. So we're gonna leave this at 16, we're gonna hit export, and that's gonna save our file out.